Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to test out watercolor with different cotton content. This is to let you see the difference between good watercolor paper and uh, not so good ones. This will help you uh, make more informed choices when you are buying watercolor paper. This is going to be the first part of um, choosing good watercolor paper. In another video, I will be talking about hot press versus cold press versus rough paper. Today, I just want to focus on cotton content. So let's take a look at some of the paper and sketchbooks that I have with me that I'm going to test out today. This here on the left side, this has zero cotton content. This is a Stillman and Burn Beta series sketchbook. I do use some watercolor on it. So we are going to test out, test this out to see how good it really is. And this is the student grade watercolor paper. This is the Aquafine series from Daler and Rowley. And this is actually the watercolor paper that I use most often when it comes to making YouTube videos because um, this is very cheap and for the type of watercolor videos that I make, the quality for from this is sufficient enough. And here we have um, some sketchbooks as well. This is the Academy sketchbook. A sketchbook that's made by a friend here in Singapore. This sketchbook features 60% cotton content. This is actually not watercolor paper. This is Rosa Spina paper made by Fabriano, but it can handle watercolor. So I'm going to test this out as well. And this is a Kunz and Papier sketchbook with watercolor paper. Cotton content in this is 35%. And here I have this watercolor journal from B Paper with 25% cotton content. And lastly, we are going to look at the paper with 100% cotton content. This is Archer's cold press paper. This is the most expensive paper compared to all the other uh, paper and sketchbooks that I have. So we're going to see if this is worth the money. A good watercolor paper is one that allows you to use watercolor techniques predictably. So when you're painting, you're using the techniques, the results should be as you expect. So today I'm going to test out three different watercolor techniques on the different papers. The first would be to blend two colors together. The second technique would be to charge in color to a wet wash. And the third is also a wet on wet technique where I'll paint the paper wet and then add in colors to the paper. Let's start with the Stillman and Burn Beta series sketchbook. This is French Ultramarine. And now let's charge in another color just to see how they blend together. And now let's try the charging method. I'm going to charge in the quinacridone magenta into this ultramarine wash. All right. This sketchbook, by the way, is tilted slightly so the water is running down. For the last technique, I'm going to wet the paper just to see how the color spreads out. Let's wait for the colors to run down and spread and dry before um, we show you the results. And this is the Dela Rowney Aquafine paper. Once again, let's try and blend some colors together. And now let's charge in some colors to this wash. And lastly, let's add some colors to this 
wet surface. The colors are slowly running down. This paper that I'm using now is the Fabriano Rosa Spina paper with 60% cotton content. The most obvious thing I notice is the colors they blend so nicely compared to the two earlier paper. And now let's charge in and now let's charge in some color to this wet wash. I used too much water, so I'm going to just um, clean this part up slightly. And lastly, let's add some color to this wet surface. You can see the colors running down very quickly. And now I'm using the Kunz and Papier sketchbook with 35% cotton content. Let's charge in some color to this wet wash. And now let's add color to the wet surface. This is 25% cotton paper from B Paper Company. I'm not sure if you can see any difference between this paper and other paper, but the most noticeable difference is when I added the other color, there's this sh almost sharp edge here. This is actually still a wet surface, so I shouldn't be seeing a sharp edge like this. The color should actually sort of spread out, even though this paper is slightly tilted. So um, that's the performance here with the 25% cotton paper from B Company. And now let's charge in some color to this wet surface. Notice how the colors, they do not spread out like on other paper. All right, wet on wet again. Let's see how the colors run down. This color doesn't run as easily on this paper compared to other paper. And lastly, we have Arches, 100% cotton paper. This paper is a bit drier compared to other paper. When I paint it like this, at this speed, you can see some of the dry edges there. While the wash is still wet, that's charging the colors. And now let's add some color to the wet surface. Notice how the color spreads out very quickly. And notice how the color is running down quite gently. All right, now that the washes have dried, let's take a closer look at them. We'll start with the paper with no cotton content. So let's start with the Stillman and Burn Beta sketchbook. I can see some color blending from ultramarine to queen magenta, but the edge here, this is not as soft, as gradual as I want it to be but at least it's still a bit soft, so this is not too bad. And here you see, um, what I wanted to achieve is to charge in the color and let the color just spread out gradually so that I can get a smooth gradation of color. You may think that, oh, hey, I painted the strokes horizontally, so they should look like this. But later on, when I show you other paper, you'll see that um, this paper really is not as good compared to other paper. So the colors are, when I painted the horizontal strokes, they tend to stay uh, where they are. They do not spread out as much. And this is the wet on wet section. The colors, they, well, spread out a bit more gradually. The edges are a bit softer compared to um, here. 
but wet on wet on this paper is still considered quite challenging. Paper performance like this is very common in sketchbooks. So uh, you can use watercolor on sketchbook like this, just that it's very difficult to blend the colors and to use wet on wet techniques. So for simple washes like this, where there is not a lot of uh, color blending, a, not a lot of gradation, I think it works fine. See all of my uh, watercolor sketches, they are sort of like flat washes. There's not a lot of gradation going on. This is Daler Rowney Aquafine watercolor paper. So the blending of colors is not bad, but I wish the colors could have been a bit softer. The gradation could have been a bit softer. And here the horizontal strokes, they sort of still remain where they are. The color did not spread out as much. And for this part here, the gradation is softer. But you can see that this are watercolor paper texture. This is a bit, a bit coarse, a bit unnatural. Some people may like this texture, but if the texture is too heavy, it may take away attention from the watercolor painting itself. And this looks a bit like fish scale. And now let's move over to the Rosa Spina paper made by Fabriano. Here you can see the gradation is so much softer. And bear in mind that earlier on, I was actually tilting the sketchbook. So even so, with the paper tilted, some of the colors actually ran up slightly and the gradation is so much softer compared to the paper with no cotton content. You can see the difference is very, is very obvious. And sometimes it's not just about cotton content, it's about how much sizing they apply on the paper as well. Sizing is basically the, some uh, gelatin that they apply on the paper so that the watercolor can remain on the paper rather than being soaked into the paper. So when you have a good sizing, the color uh, will remain on the paper and the colors will look vibrant. And it also affects how the colors blend together. So sizing is important. So it's not all about cotton content. So for this wash here, I again painted horizontal strokes and notice how the colors, how they spread out. So if you want to charge in colors um, with this paper, you can get very smooth, very soft gradations like this. And one nice thing is when you're charging colors like this, you can see the individual characteristics of the colors. So here I can see Queen Magenta. I can also see French Ultramarine. So I can see um, both the colors working together very nicely. And here you can see this part here. This is also very soft. So if you want to paint wet on wet, if you want to have gradations where the color fit into the white of the paper, I think um, this paper works really well. This is Fabriano Rosa Spina, 60% cotton content. This is Kunst and Papier sketchbook with 35% cotton content. So the gradation is quite soft as well. And here with the horizontal strokes, the colors they blend but not as soft compared to the Rosa Spina paper. You can still see the individual uh, horizontal strokes quite clearly. But here, it's a bit difficult to make out the horizontal strokes, especially this area here. But here, yeah, you can still see it's horizontal. And this is how it looks like with the colors fading into the white of the paper. The gradation is quite soft as well. This is the watercolor journal from B paper. As mentioned earlier, the colors, they just do not spread out. They do not blend. Once you put the colors there, it just stays there. It doesn't um, mix with other color. I mean, take a look at this. There's almost no spreading at all. So um, performance of this paper, it's not that good. In fact, it is quite bad, actually. Here we try to uh, blend the color to the white of the paper. I added a lot more pigment here. And most of the pigment actually just stayed here. Share some of the colors, they sort of run down, but um, you can still see the concentration of pigment here. 
And lastly, we have Arches watercolor paper. The gradation here is so soft, so smooth, and the paper was tilted. Still, the color was able to sort of spread upwards. So this is very good paper. And here, you can see the horizontal strokes. Um, they are some, are some are still quite obvious, but some they have spread out so softly into the ultramarine. So if you want um, to apply charging ink techniques, this is very good paper. And this is the color fading into the white of the paper. The gradation, it's so gradual, it's so smooth compared to the B paper where you can see this um, blob of pigment here. And I mean, it's very obvious there are two separate areas, but here the gradation is so smooth. Two factors that contribute to the quality of the paper is the sizing on the paper and also the cotton content. So if you have more cotton content, the paper will be durable. It makes um, the paper suitable for um, certain techniques like for example, if you want to leave the colors or if you want to scrub away the colors, um, the paper will be durable enough for you to do that. But for paper with little or no cotton content, sometimes when you do scrubbing, when you do lifting, or even when you apply two or three layers onto the paper, you may start to see the paper uh, fiber coming off. So um, that's um, not very durable compared to cotton paper. Of course, having a mixture of um, um, some cotton content like 25%, um, 50%, that actually enhances the durability of the paper by quite a lot. The amount of sizing is important as well. If the sizing is not enough, the colors will soak into the paper. It may make the colors appear less vibrant than it can be. So for paper with good amount of sizing, the colors will appear very vibrant because the color is actually sitting on top of the paper, not inside the paper. So these two combination of factors will affect the quality of the paper. So we can see that 100% cotton paper, um, the performance here with the Arches paper is quite similar to the Fabriano Rosa Spina print making paper, even though this has only 60% cotton content. And when we take a look at this, the B paper with 25% cotton content and compare that to this paper with no cotton content, this paper, the daily rounding, actually performs better compared to B paper. Um, this is this is rubbish performance. Here with Stillman and Burn, the Beta series sketchbook, the watercolor performance on this paper is not that good. But um, this sort of paper is more suitable for use in sketchbooks like this, where you do not need to. Um, where you may not need gradations. If you're someone who doesn't need gradations, uh, if you do not want to charge in your colors, if you do not want to blend colors, if you just want to apply washes um, straight on the paper like this with um, um, no wet on wet techniques, I think paper like this works well in sketchbooks. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to know the actual quality of the watercolor paper unless you test it yourself or if you um, buy the trusted brands like Archer's, Fabriano, um, those they will work well. But for other brands, it's, uh, it's difficult to tell how good the watercolor paper is. Sometimes the sketchbook may say that it can handle watercolor. Yes, it can handle watercolor, but um, how well does it handle um, the actual watercolor techniques like wet on wet? If you want to do color blending, can it do it? And just because the paper is labeled with 100% cotton, it doesn't mean that the paper is suitable for watercolor as well. As mentioned earlier, the sizing does matter. So for example, there is this um, mixed media journal from Strathmore, the 500 series mixed media journal, which features 100% cotton paper. The paper quality in that sketchbook is excellent, but it's not suitable for watercolor because the paper is not sized, it's not treated for use with watercolor. So you are going to get performance that is very similar to the uh, lousy non-cotton uh, paper. So um, cotton content matters, the sizing also matters. Watercolor paper can be expensive, but you do get what you pay for. If you want to get cheap watercolor paper, like good quality ones, you can get those uh, full size sheets and then cut down the paper. Um, those will be more 
uh, affordable compared to pads like this. So that's all for today's video on the cotton content in paper. In the next video, actually in a separate video, not the next one, I will talk about hot press versus cold press versus rough. And I'm also going to talk about the colors of the paper, like bright white versus traditional white versus um, warm paper. So stay tuned for that video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any thoughts on watercolor paper, I would love to hear your experience. Share them in the comment section below. All right, see you, bye.